Hello, again students. Welcome to BMAT Section 2 Biology. Ecosystems. Here are the learning objectives for this section. Let us begin. All the individuals of a species living within a specific area are collectively called a population. For example, a forest may include many white pine trees. All of these pine trees represent the population of white pine trees in this forest. Different populations may live in the same specific area. For example, the forest with the pine trees includes populations of flowering plants and insects and microbial populations. The community is the set of populations inhabiting a particular area. For instance, all the trees, flowers, insects, and other populations in a forest form the forest's community. The forest itself is an ecosystem. An ecosystem consists of all the living things in a particular area, together with the abiotic or non-living parts of that environment, such as nitrogen in the soil or rainwater. At the highest level of organization, the biosphere is the collection of all ecosystems, and it represents the zones of life on Earth. It includes land, water, and portions of the atmosphere. Ecosystem ecology is an extension of organismal, population, and community ecology. The ecosystem comprises all the biotic components, living things, and abiotic components, non-living things, in a particular geographic area. Some of the abiotic components include air, water, soil, and climate. Ecosystem biologists study how nutrients and energy are stored and moved among organisms in the surrounding atmosphere, soil, and water. Factors affecting population size include Immigration When individuals leave a population Emigration When individuals outside a specific population join that population Birth rate The rate at which new individuals are being born into a population Death rate The rate at which individuals die in a population Perhaps the classical example of species interaction is the predator-prey relationship. The narrowest definition of the predator-prey interaction describes individuals of one population that kill and then consume the individuals of another population. Population sizes of predators and prey in a community are not constant over time, and they may vary in cycles that appear to be related. A second type of symbiotic relationship is called mutualism, in which two species benefit from their interaction. For example, termites have a mutualistic relationship with protists that live in the insect's gut. The termite benefits from the ability of the protists to digest cellulose. However, the protists are able to digest cellulose only because of the presence of symbiotic bacteria within their cells that produce the cellulose enzyme. The termite itself cannot do this. Without the protozoa, it would not be able to obtain energy from its food, cellulose from the wood it chews and eats. The protozoa benefit by having a protective environment and a constant supply of food from the wood chewing actions of the termite. In turn, the protists benefit from the enzymes provided by their bacterial and the symbionts, while the bacteria benefit from a doubly protective environment and a constant source of nutrients from two hosts. A parasite is an organism that feeds off another without immediately killing the organism it is feeding on. In this relationship, the parasite benefits, but the organism being fed upon, the host, is harmed. The host is usually weakened by the parasite as it siphons resources the host would normally use to maintain itself. Parasites may kill their hosts, but there is usually selection to slow down this process, to allow the parasite time to complete its reproductive cycle, before it or its offspring are able to spread to another host. Foundation species are considered the base or bedrock of a community, having the greatest influence on its overall structure. They are often primary producers, and they are typically an abundant organism. For example, kelp, a species of brown algae, is a foundation species that forms the basis of the kelp forests off the coast of California. Foundation species may physically modify the environment to produce and maintain habitats that benefit the other organisms that use them. Examples include the kelp described above or tree species found in a forest. The photosynthetic corals of the coral reef also provide structure by physically modifying the environment. Carbon dioxide gas exists in the atmosphere and is dissolved in water. Photosynthesis converts carbon dioxide gas to organic carbon, and respiration cycles the organic carbon back into carbon dioxide gas. Long-term storage of organic carbon occurs when matter from living organisms is buried deep underground and becomes fossilized. Volcanic activity and, more recently, human emissions bring this stored carbon back into the carbon cycle. The water cycle. Water from the land and oceans enters the atmosphere by evaporation or sublimation, where it condenses into clouds and falls as rain or snow. Precipitated water may enter freshwater bodies or infiltrate the soil. The cycle is complete when surface or groundwater re-enters the ocean. Thank you and well done. You have made it to the end of Section 2 Biology. Make sure to practice using a few past papers, focusing on how to think critically, and apply the concepts you have been introduced to when answering questions from the exam.